Hey there folks, it's Brian with Foxfire Armory, and I know it's been a while since last video came out, but a lot of stuff's been going on. I've been doing some freelance work, trying to uh, make some extra money, get some stuff, try to get some land situated here, and you know, things have just been kind of crazy out there. So, without further ado, we're going to get into the first thing I want to take care of in this video, and that is this. Uh, this is the giveaway. <laughs> that we have been trying to get to one of you for I don't even know how long now at this point. So the way that you are going to get entered to win this box this time is this keyword right here, leave a comment on this video with that keyword in it and make sure that you're subscribed because I'm going to use some software to pick a winner who has subscribed, who has also Put that specific keyword into the comments. So <clears throat> that'll take care of that. Hopefully this time someone will actually claim the prize. If not, I'm just going to pick a winner off of uh, make a little spreadsheet of those of you who actually consistently comment on the videos and I'm going to give it away to one of you guys. That way I know it goes to, to someone who actually watches the videos. So for those of you with notifications on, Make sure you follow those directions, make sure you're subscribed, and let's give this thing away. We're gonna make it happen one way or another, but <laughs> let's try to, to get this done right with this video. All right, so let me throw this off to the side there. <clears throat> and, <sighs> whew, all right, a lot has been going on in my life. I'm trying to get videos done. Like I said before, I had some issues with uh, the card and some corruption on files, whatnot. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Card seems to be fine now, seems to be working fine. So hopefully no more issues in the future with that. Uh, as we go into the winter months, things are gonna get probably a little more difficult for me to get consistent videos out. So may not be one every week like I'm hoping to do, but probably something more like once every two weeks because any videos that require me to go outdoors kind of aren't gonna happen uh, now. And um, the video I shot at the range, I can't reshoot now because our range that I go to here is an outdoor range. And they're the only ones, at least locally, that will allow me to record anything. So those videos obviously are gonna have to wait till next year now. But anything that I can get done inside plus this typical news news ish type of videos i'm gonna keep trying to get those out now i got a lot to try to get through today there's just been a lot happening the last couple of weeks and since i haven't been putting a video out every week like i was hoping to i'm gonna try to condense basically three weeks worth of information into a single video so i'm gonna try to keep this under 30 minutes and without further ado let's get into this week's content all right, so let's get into this week's content. And the first thing that I want to kind of touch base on is, for those of you who don't know, haven't been following the Kenosha shooting, uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is wrapping up, I think Monday, Tuesday, they're expecting to have kind of everything wrapped and Depending on where you live, if you're, you're in a, what I would consider more urban area, something similar to Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Minneapolis, Portland, maybe even LA, I'm not exactly sure where, but big cities more than likely are going to be the ones to see this. But depending on the outcome, there could be some very heavy civil unrest in these areas. <clears throat> So keep that in mind if you're traveling, if you live in these areas, just keep that in mind as this trial comes to a close because personally I don't really have a stake in this at all, but knowing how things went that summer uh, of 2020 and how things went with the Derek Chauvin trial, if things don't go the way that the mob is, is hoping that they will, we very well could see a lot of civil unrest and rioting and looting and that kind of stuff coming up. So just wanted to, to put that out there. For those of you who are unaware or haven't been following, just keep an eye on that come early next week. Um, Wednesday would probably be my guess, would be the day that we would actually know the, the verdict more than likely. Tuesday, probably the earliest. So. 
keep an eye out for that. If you're nowhere near any of these urban centers, you're probably fine. But for those of you that are anywhere even remotely close, definitely keep an eye out for, for the news on the verdict on that one. So I'm gonna grab my handy nanny notebook here. And we will get into everything else that I wanted to get done in other videos, but we're gonna just knock it all out here in this video. So first thing first, for those of you that weren't paying attention, the Glenn Youngkin win in Virginia for uh, governor. This is huge. So he basically beat out a very, 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 very heavy blue state current governor to take place as a Republican governor now in Virginia. For those of you that don't know, Richmond in Virginia is very close to DC. So you get a lot of the DC liberals move to Virginia because it's cheaper to live and then they'll travel, travel to Washington DC. And because it's such a large urban center, what that ends up happening is you get a lot of condensed people who vote the same way and it kind of votes for the entire state. Well, whatever happened, and I'm assuming it had to do along with the critical race theory stuff in the schools and Loudoun County to be specific, he was able to basically, in my eyes, landslide that, uh, that win. That has also now cascaded into other things like, I don't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. I meant to write it down, completely forgot. Uh, the, I think it was a Senate race in New Jersey. A truck driver spent $158 and won against the Senate majority leader for New Jersey and won. So that leaves some high hopes going into 2022, into the elections and primaries that are gonna be happening then that people have kind of woken up to the craziness. I, as an independent myself, used to vote policy, right? And I would vote Democrat, vote Republican, didn't really matter as long as the policy was sound to what I believed in. These days, it seems like everything on the Democrat Party ticket is crazy, progressive, liberal pipe dreams that don't make any sense for actual working stiffs like myself. So I find myself leaning more towards the independents and the Republicans. What I am hoping for is we do see a red wave, a, a big red wave to kind of get people to understand that those crazy policies don't drive our economy and they're never gonna help our economy. And we need, we need people who are actually gonna do things to keep the economy afloat. I mean, you can tell right now, things are a disaster. It's a mess. This administration has pretty much just run the country into the ground in what, nine, what, what are we in here? He's been in, so, 10 months. Um, and it's, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I go into Quick Trip or any other store and, and that's just, it's just constant complaining about the prices, the shortages, just everything for everybody. So hopefully good things to come with that. I'll keep you guys posted as, as more news comes out and going into 2020 here. And then, again, I hate beating a dead horse with a stick, but the looming shortages going into 2022 here are, they look like a disaster. I just today saw a video from someone on TikTok who is a crane operator at the, I believe it was the Long Beach port in California. And so he does those, those overhead cranes that come, they pick up the things and they put them on the trucks. Well, one thing I didn't realize about some of the harbors that we have now is a lot of the trucking internally on the harbor is all automated. And what that ends up doing is that means that there's only so f a finite amount of containers that they can move at a given time and a given day because they've now automated the jobs that people used to be able to put overtime hours in and maybe move a little bit faster if it's not as safe, right? Uh, but that doesn't happen anymore because so much of that those jobs are now automated. And you can't mix automation with live employees in certain instances because well, it's just not designed that way. So shortages are probably gonna increase. Uh, shelves are probably gonna continue to get bare. There are certain items I know in, in a lot of areas are, are getting really bad. I know in Detroit area, uh, a friend of mine just sent me a photo of his local Kroger and the canned goods 
aisle basically was bare. There was a little bit of tuna on there, there was some baked beans on there, but the entire aisle was super sparse and almost nothing on the shelves. And that is right there in Detroit. I'm anticipating larger metropolitan areas are going to see these shortages quicker than those in the surrounding suburbs. There's just not as many people, you know, to panic buy and buy that stuff off the shelves. So keep an eye on that stuff. If there's stuff that you see that's starting to move off the shelves quicker than other things, maybe it's time to start picking up a little bit extra as you go to the grocery store to, well, unfortunately, you're going to contribute to the shortages because the product's just not moving under the shelves, but that will allow you to sustain through some of these issues. Obviously, for those of us, it's winter time if you have an indoor greenhouse and can plant some of your own food, well, that's great also, but you know, it's hard to do in the winter time, at least here in Wisconsin. It definitely makes it much harder to, to grow your own food. So plan accordingly, get what you need, for your family to kind of ride out the next few months. I have a feeling moving into 2020, things are gonna get a little rough. And hopefully things will kind of start coming back. I, you know, I'm a firm believer on prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So won't go into too much more on that one in this video, but just to expect more shortages. So, it seemed like the uh, Joe Biden Build Back Better plan, whatever they're, they're calling it here, uh, was dead in the water for a while. And it looked like Mansion and Cinema were kind of holding it up. This latest one, what was it, $1.8 trillion spending bill that they have that supposedly is supposed to go to infrastructure, but only 8% of the bill actually does go to infrastructure. Well, that ended up getting passed through because a bunch of the Rhino Republicans decided to vote with the Democrats to appease and, and not shut down the government for whatever reason. I say shut it down, but whatever, we're here. We all, I think we all were hoping that that wasn't going to get passed because, well, that's just going to mean taxes for you guys, myself included in that. Because what people don't understand is as inflation continues to go up, it's basically just a hidden tax on the middle and lower classes because we are the ones who end up getting hit the worst with this stuff. So you're seeing it with milk prices. I think milk by me just went up another 19 cents per gallon. And so for those of you who buy multiple gallons a week, definitely understand that that adds up very, very quickly. And this is happening with all the products on the shelves right now. I was just talking to uh, one of the the people who works at the local Woodman's and they were telling me that they are upping majority of the prices on almost every item there by at least 20 to 30 percent moving into December here. And, and that's huge. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot when you're talking, you know, cents on products. But when you're talking a, a grocery bill that might have cost you $150 is now costing you $200 or, a, you know, even higher grocery bills for those of you who may not shop every week, it, it adds up real, real quick. And your your monthly bill goes from being maybe, we'll, we'll call it $400 a month to now you're at $600 a month. And then you multiply that by 12 months and there you go. It's, it's not chump change. So with that on the horizon, the forecasts, I believe now, let's see, Bloomberg, uh, one of their uh, analysts just predicted this. Goldman Sachs, one of their analysts just predicted this. By the end of December this year, we could see the price of a barrel of petroleum, crude, crude oil, at $120. I don't know if, you really, if those of you out there know anything about the markets and how this stuff works, but $120 a barrel basically equates to a national average of, of around $5 per gallon. We're bad now at, I think our national average is about $4. That's a whole dollar extra per gallon that everyone will be spending to fill up their cars. Now going into the winter months, that is brutal 
because you you as a, a driver or as someone who runs a generator you're running that stuff more frequently right people are warming up their cars because they have to get the ice off or the snow off or they're running the generator because the power goes out because there's too much snow on the lines all that kind of stuff which adds to shortages that we already are seeing with fuel so keep that in mind while you guys are out there driving around, planning trips, all that kind of stuff, gas prices are going to go up. And if they go up to what the analysts are currently predicting, the areas that are currently about $3 a gallon, expect that to get closer to the 4 to $5 a gallon range. We're seeing already upwards of $8 in California. So expect that stuff to get worse. Expect it to potentially even get into the fuel rationing uh, like, like we had in the 70s. So there may be fuel lines with fuel rationing. So I know a lot of this is kind of gloomy, not a great forecast, but want to keep you guys updated, keep you guys informed. That's kind of my goal. I try to keep myself informed and just try to help those out there that are, are willing to listen, right? So the next thing is inflation year over year from last October to this October was an increase of 10%. Whether that is true or not compared to what the true inflation numbers are, which if I had to guess are probably closer to 14 to 15 percent, 10 percent is huge. That is huge. That is a 10 percent increase across the board on everything you purchase. That it's a 10 percent tax, right, on your paycheck, because no matter how you how you look at it, no matter how you cut it, 10 percent across everything for inflation. I mean, that's a 10% tax because that's 10% less your dollar goes. So we're, we're going to see that continue to rise here as we go into 2020 would be my guess as the shortages continue. Um, restaurants, grocers, pretty much everyone is raising their prices. I think the only one who really hasn't raised prices too much is Amazon, but obviously they're a monopoly in the industry. So they really can kind of afford to not raise their prices too much just yet. But expect them to start raising their prices coming 2022 if things don't change. Latest numbers, and this just came out last week, is the producer price index was just released. And I want to say it was eight, I'm trying to read my own handwriting here, 8.6% year over year from last year. So from October last year to October this year, it was an 8.6% increase in the, cons in the producer price index. What that means is all your cost of goods have gone up. So manufacturing of cars, manufacturing of clothing, manufacturing of any sort of goods, toys, electronics, all that stuff. 8.6% increase from last year. So if you're buying a new TV, if you're buying a new laptop, if you're buying a new car, any of that stuff, expect that to be reflected in the price here in the coming months. Because obviously 8.6% is going to have to get shifted somewhere so that these producers can make up those costs so that they're, they're not going into the red and, and eventually going bankrupt. Which who knows, that could be the, the end goal of things at this point. That's, I mean... How do you do this much destruction in 10 months and not be intentional, right? I don't know. Maybe that's conspiracy theory talking here, but it, it is starting to seem intentional at this point. So then to go along with that, the consumer price index, which was just released, was 6.2% year over year. So October of last year to October of this year. That basically means the consumer goods prices have gone up 6.2% from basically production to distribution. That combined with everything else is basically where I, th I think they're getting the, that 10% mark for inflation, right? I haven't looked at all the breakdowns. Don't really care to at this point. Everything is expensive. Everything's getting more expensive. It's going to get worse. And for those of you who are stuck in cities and can't get out, now really would be the time to start looking at getting out. Because what's going to end up happening is if we do end up seeing a SHTF scenario 
where let's just say the economy did happen to collapse, right? Full, utter, all on collapse, dollar goes to zero, it's worthless, you know, nothing can be purchased with, with a dollar, right? So a paper dollar bill is worthless. Your debit card is worthless. Your credit card is worthless. It's all worthless. The first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna see raids on grocery stores, right? So grocery stores are going to just be completely wiped out almost instantaneously in large metropolitan areas. So for those of you that are stuck in the cities, expect that to happen, right? If you have friends that are in the rural areas or don't have friends in the rural, start making friends in the rural areas because those will be less hit right off the bat. And at least then you may have some place to go and get out of the chaos that will be the cities. I am praying to God that doesn't happen, but God forbid it does. Just be ready for it and understand that right now the direction and the trajectory that this country is headed, it really seems like it could be a possibility at this point. So keep that in mind, not trying to scare anyone, but just keep that in the back of your mind as you're making decisions moving forward for yourself, your family, whomever. And just to kind of close things out then from there, what can we do as a country, as a community, to just start better looking out for each other? I really think we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to men getting out there and hunting and providing for their families and really taking more of a leadership role than they have in the past. And hunting pays for our parks. It, it pays for conservation efforts. It pays for things that people love to talk about, like nature preserves and creating green energy. Hunting permits, fishing permits, they pay for a lot of that stuff. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand that. And th if those of you who do hunt and you understand, you know, you go out there, you shoot yourself a deer, you got the deer, do you process it yourself or do you take it to somebody to get processed? You know, maybe if there's a small local processor, it might behoove you to take it to the local processor and pay a little bit extra, you know, to keep them going. And in turn, you know, they might be able to get it done a little bit quicker than you would be able to do it yourself. Now, if you have a spot to process everything yourself, well, save yourself the money, obviously, and process it yourself. But maybe take a little bit extra of that meat that you might not use or need or, or want and give it to a local shelter or give it to a, a family that you know that, that could potentially use it. And we really just need to get back to that. And it's sad that this day and age, things have just gotten to a point to where no one knows how to communicate anymore. Whether it's the internet, whether it was the, the phone, I don't really care to try to figure all that out at this point, but we, we've kind of lost our ways as a society, and I, I think we kind of just need to get back to the old ways, right? Face-to-face -face interactions, you know, the mask mandates and all that stuff are just creating even more divide, and we're, we're, we're splitting and fra fracturing as a nation, right? And left, right, Republican, Democrat, at this point, none of that matters. You know, there's, you got your fringe left, you got your left, you got your center left, you got, you know, these people are mad at these people on the left and these people and these people are mad at these people on the right. And it's all just ridiculous at this point. So just be kind to each other, hold the door open for people, you know, say thank you, sir, ma'am, yes, please. You know, just be kind to each other. And I'm going to leave it there because we're getting close to that 30 minute mark. And until next time, guys, stay safe. Stay sharp, stay vigilant, until next time.